Hey everyone, this is Anthony from the Console Gaming Crew, and we could not be happier to announce that we are now part of the Boss Rush Podcast Network and are featured on BossRushGames.com. BossRushGames.com is a place where you can find up-to-date news articles, blogs, and podcasts about video games. In addition to that, there is a growing collection of podcasts in not just the gaming community, but other communities as well. We are honored to be part of such a great network of podcasters, so please stop by and give everyone a listen. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Yo, crew members, what it be? Hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> Beautiful. I missed all this. Oh, man. Today's going to be nice, light, and easy. Just a straight newsworthy day. That's it. Let's do it, man. Some, not not even a whole lot, but it's it's uh some it's about stuff quality, enough to quantity. talk about. Some it's about stuff. Quality. There's some bug quality. snacks in it. Yeah, I think <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's favorite of all favorite. You know what? Things. We might as well just we might as well just start with that since you just brought it up. And well, I you guess, know what? You know what? Dude, I, I, should be, I should be the one to do it. You are going to be the one to do it. Go ahead, buddy. Begrudgingly, <laughs> I laughed I'm so hard when I saw this. this. Yeah, uh, it's it's fucked up because the the way we do this generally is when we have these. You know, these episodes, Wes sends us news articles that he finds. And when he said this was going to be, let's just make this a news episode. I was like, all right, well, I had something I was going to talk about anyway, which we'll get to later. And I was like, you know, let me find some more stuff. I came across that article to the, or this article a minute before you sent it. And I was just like, I feel like this <laughs> would surprise them for me to talk about. And then, but you know, so anyway. <laughs> Without yeah. further ado, Bug Snacks, the game of the game of the century. Um, Bug Snacks is coming to Nintendo Switch and Xbox this month, alongside the Isle of Big Snacks expansion. Um, Bug Snacks is the best. Is, yep, yeah, it's a, like it's a, my my soul is 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 not so happy. Nice. Um, hey, Andy Souls like. Oh got this article. Uh, um, Jonathan Dornbush off IGN. I'm going to, you know, not read word for word, but a, a lot of this is from his article. So Bug Snacks, which originally debuted on PS4, PS5, and PC in November of 2020, has been announced for Nintendo Switch, Series X, and S, Xbox One, including a Game Pass release for console, PC, and cloud. Uh, developer Young Horses has announced Bug Snacks will, arrive, uh, will arrive on these new platforms April 28th, which will also mark the release of the anticipated Isle of Big Snacks expansion on all the platforms, as well as a free up update via pc and uh update uh, free update for pc and playstation players uh the expansion will come as well as an additional achievements to the base list on xbox um for new players i'll go over this once because i don't want to do it uh, any more than that bug snacks <laughs> is a first person adventure game where you collect subway sandwiches no i'm just kidding um bug snacks is the first per uh, first person adventure game that sees you explore a colorful island full of bug snacks, helping mm. a handful of grumpuses living on the island with both their personal stories as well as uncovering the larger secrets of what happened to the mysteriously disappeared explorer, Elizabeth Megafig. Wait, I got a question. What are they called again? Bug snacks? No, no, the people that are in. Oh, oh, the um, grumpuses? Ah, there it is, grumpuses. 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 I just that, no, that, that sound that you made it sounds like, like in my mind, that's what a grumpus would sound like. I, it's because I am a grumpus. Um, so yeah, so, <laughs> so the Isle of Big Snacks expansion will be accessible to new players after completing a particular Grumpus storyline, while players who have already beaten the base game can, uh, can load a pre-ending save to hop into the experience. Um, so yeah, that is going to come in, what did I say, April 28th, right? Yeah, so April 28th, you will get, uh... The Isle of Big Snacks expansion, plus the game coming to Switch, Xbox Series X and S, uh, and uh, Xbox One. So that is Bug Snacks. That is all I want to say about Bug Snacks. That's all I'm gonna say about Bug Snacks. Andrew just became the, the king spokesperson of all. for Bug Snacks. <laughs> the, the king of all grumpuses. <laughs> after, after that little fucking speech you just did for the fucking game. Yeah. Like, I hate my life. <laughs> How did I get here? You became really friends know. with us, number one. And then had a conversation while we were drinking, and we were like, hey, we should do this. And here we um, are, like, a gajillion episodes later. Now, since it made <laughs> sense slash no sense... 
for me to do that one one what will make a little more yeah. sense would be for anthony to tell you about uh, quite a, a high profile game he thoroughly enjoyed that uh has some news on its on its movie adaptation. Eh? I guess we're all picking each other's fucking articles today. I like this. I guess so. this we saw what the articles fun. were. We yeah. knew exactly who was going to do what. Uh, <laughs> so. so I this is a cold read for me because I didn't even go through this one actually. Ah, uh, this so is gonna this be is one of the ones be, that I found. This is, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, this is Ghost of Tsushima movie adaptation finds its screenwriter. It has been posted on IGN by Logan Planet. Uh, Sony Pictures is named uh, Takashi Doshir. Sorry, is that is that like that sounds like Japanese, but with like a German last name? Yeah, it really does. He does something. I thought the same Takashi thing when I first Doshir. read this. D O S C H E R. Takashi. Takashi. Doshir. I'm gonna Google this. Do Google it. Uh, as the writer of Google the upcoming it. Ghost of Tsushima film, film, yeah, film adaptation, according to Deadline. Dosher previously wrote uh, Sci-Fi Romance Only, that's the name of it, and his <clears throat> most recent project, Blue, um, which is a twist on a Japanese monster movie that, curr- that is currently in development. Uh, the story will be retelling of Jin Sakai's uh, journey as seen in Ghost of Tsushima, uh, where the samurai warrior fights to free the island of Tsushima from the Mongol invasion. A movie based on the 2020 PlayStation 4 exclusive was announced last year where we learned John Wick director Chad Stall... Stall... Whatever. Chad. Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> Chad will helm the project. The production will also have input from Sucker Punch, the studio that developed the video game. Okay, that right there for me, nice. that's good news. That's good news. That's kind of like, again, but here's the thing. Before I get back into this article, I'm going to go off on a little thing like I always do. Um, Please do. For this movie, for this movie to be, this Damn. adaptation of this movie to be good, they have to get the right casting, right? So, I was, like, I was, ju- I was literally getting ready to ask you, since you are, as far as the three of us goes, the uh, the go to <clears> person <throat> for all things goes to Tsushima. I was gonna say what, uh, what are a few things that you think were a key to making sure that this is a is a great movie? Is, so, it, is it more so casting? Is it making sure they stick? It Can all they deviate de- from the story at all. I, I well, so the thing is, is with all the side missions that are actually in the game itself. They could deviate and do what would be considered one of the more main side missions of the game. Mm. Um, however, if you really want to stick to Jin's story, they could go a whole different route and do the whole thing like with his father. Um, an, ad- an adaptation of, of that. But it sounds like they're going to go, like I said, I haven't read this article. Um, they definitely need... They definitely need to, I think, stick to the script of the game, especially if Sucker Punch is going to be involved with the the whole, well, not the whole process, but I mean, hopefully they'll be involved with the whole process. Um, now, do you have, I, I know this is right here on the fucking spot. Um, who, do you, who do you think, If do you have anyone in mind that you think? That yeah, actually I do. Yeah. Um, He's been he's in a lot of martial arts movies. He was in you may know him from Rush Hour Three. Um, I'm actually looking up. His name is uh, Hikiri Sandai or whatever. He played Kenji. He played as Lee's brother, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That I can see that guy. Uh, Here, let me see if I can get a better picture for you guys to see. Yeah, I I pulled him up right now. I know exactly what looks like. Yep. He literally looks so many movies. Yeah. What did you just? This man just having some problems. No, no, he's got an open bag of M and M's. I'm pretty sure he fucking swallowed a fucking M and M. But uh, so if you look up, um, I I I don't want. I'm I'm gonna mispronounce his name, but it's I think it's Hiro Yuki Sandia S A N A D A. But anyway, if you if you're listening and you get an opportunity and you look at you look at him and then you look at Jin Sakai. Tell me, tell me that's not like a really good match, right? That's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. I think he, people, could, and he he's such a good actor. He's such a good actor. People like, also know him from the newest Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Movie. Yeah. He okay. Was, yeah, he was yeah. Scorpion. Yes. There you go. He was also Scorpion. Yes, absolutely perfect. Um, he could, he could. I think he could easily do that role with ease. See, 
that seems like a match made in heaven. Right. Really. Um, it's it's right up his alley. And he and he, he. I mean, if you look if you look at the if you look at the the picture art on the the you know for the Ghost of Tsushima the game, it literally looks like him, but without the goatee. Um, yeah, it's it's not often that you have someone that is literally like picture perfect for a role. Now, obviously, he's got to not be busy. <laughs> so, right, and I agree. But... Um, so uh, there's only there's only two paragraphs left. So it says Chad, the filmmakers, um, has said that they are taking their time and they're going to be doing it right. Now we've heard this time and time again when it comes to video game adaptation. Adapt. Ah. I, I can't even talk. Adaptation. Thing. Hmm? Frank doesn't have a part in this one. So it should be good. The dude's name was Frank, right? That was Paul. And I think was it was Paul. 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 Well, Paul, Paul. Paul doesn't have anything. Paul W. S. Anderson. There you go. <laughs> I think I'm pretty. There you Andy, go. You got it. For me I'm, really quick. I'm, I'm almost guaranteed you got it. Or Wes, you want to use Google it really quick? I think it's Paul W. S. Anderson. <laughs> I can't believe we're bringing it back to last. <laughs> Fuck that guy from last week. <laughs> Fucking is, wor- Paul W. S. Anderson, yes? It is Paul W. S. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, that guy can't fucking <laughs> regu- I, he's that who, name re- who oh. regularly works in science fiction films and video game adaptations. So if you have a PSA you'd like to put out right now, yeah. before this movie <laughs> Do gets made. not hire him. Uh, Do not involve him in this game. Uh Sucker Punch. Uh Chad Stalinsky. I'm just gonna call you Chad Stalinsky because I can't say your last name. Don't involve Paul W. S. Anderson. He's going to hire his wife to play Jin Sakai, probably. (laughs) Worst adaptation I will ever see. He's going to hire his wife to play Jin Sakai, and somehow the Mongols are going to end up in New York City. Uh, Yes, 100%. That's that's how it's going to happen. And the Mongols have the T-virus, and you got to go. You're going to be... I will will forever... I will I will drive my own vehicle off a bridge. <laughs> you are gonna be fine. And I will make it. sure that I am on Facebook Live, which we don't even fucking like use anymore, but I will use Facebook Live you and I will cuss Paul W. S. Anderson out to my grave. You are going to see God, Mila you guys Jovovich. got really angry. You're, I was in a good you, mood. Just just picture this. You're gonna see Mila Jovovich play Jin Sakai and she's gonna be shooting the Mongols in Radio City Musical. She's yeah, gonna you that's know what? It's gonna happen. It's gonna make it even better. She's gonna do it naked, <laughs> shooting lasers out of her nipples. <laughs> I mean, they're long enough. And then he's going to go, I don't know why the movie didn't land. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Wes, by the way, the name of this episode is Shooting Lasers Out of Her Nipples. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> or my nipples. If you don't want to add like a he, she, yeah. the, if yeah, you don't want to yeah. add out any. Of my, co- out, of, out, of, out of my nipples. Out yeah. of my nipples. I think Dude, it sounds better. These, these titles that we have for these. I'm like, sorry, you no guys. One, if no one knew. This what is called we did, clickbait, by you'd the have, way. You'd, yeah, <laughs> you'd have. Yeah, like you want our shit to get even more hits, just call it cute cats. <laughs> oh my cute god. Kitten, cute kitten sounds. Anyway, there was two paragraphs left. Basically, Sucker Punch and Chad are talking about making sure that this this uh, adaptation gets done right. It says they're working very closely with the game developers, which also gets me excited uh, to make sure uh, we stick to what's great about it. The Ghost of Tsushima movie is just one part of a larger push from Sony to bring its PlayStation IPs to the silver screen. Um, and here's some of the others that they're talking about. It's Beyond Ghost. There's recently released Uncharted movie, The Last of Us, the TV show, and a God of War series. I'm so we already know how excited I am for that Last of Us series. It should be fantastic. Yeah. So is that bubble in your throat, dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, in in the case of me doing that, um, I think, I think Wes needs to talk about Cyberpunk. I figured you were going to do that. I, I think he has because we, we, we have that. no Borderlands news, so. Yeah. I mean, and also, yeah. I did play this game for like two hours. So, so. there you go. He has a little so, bit of. Yes, yeah, so I have. A, I love I love how this game, even by other video games, was like hailed as the next big, crazy, amazing thing that everyone has to play. Well, and you're leaving this in by, I played this game for two hours. <laughs> he was like, never. But hold on. The really quick, I, dude, I did the same thing with hours. The Witcher 3. I played The Witcher 3 for like six hours. And uh, I, I put some time in The Witcher 3, and I did it on. Nintendo Switch. I was actually decent on the Nintendo the Nintendo Switch. I played on the Nintendo Switch Lite while I was deployed, because uh, Zach got it for me uh, as a gift for Christmas, and I actually played. I, I mean, I had about forty to fifty hours in it. It was. I actually have more fun uh-huh. playing. Well, here's the thing: graphics weren't phenomenal by any means on the Switch, but I have more fun playing it on the N- Nintendo Switch and the Switch Lite than I did on a console. I, and I don't know, maybe it's because, like, the graphics were decent enough in a handheld that I had, you know what I mean? Like, I literally had, like... It just a, felt good. I had a great 
a, a really good RPG at my fingertips whenever I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to like turn on TV, turn on I a mean, console. It was just like, boop, turn I've, this bitch I've on. Ne- I've never heard anybody badmouth any of those games. And so, really quick, that gets me back to what I was going to say before you start, Wes. Uh, Cyberpunk was developed by a company who created The Witcher 3. Same company, CD Projekt Red. Fantastic game. And that being said, it was supposed to kind of pick up the helm where The Witcher kind of left off, right? It was supposed to be like the next big thing for them. Unfortunately, they dropped the ball because they set expectations way too high. Where did my voice just go? Just like that. (laughs) I was about to rush it, then I slowed down and was like, expectations. Expectations. Um, (laughs) At least I I didn't like choke on a nut. (laughs) <laughs> Andy, Andy's, Andy's over here choking on schnuts. What happened? I choked on a nut again. <laughs> um, yeah, that they was their next. It. That was their next they big project, it. and and they rushed it. And we, it was one of those games that we talked about that they sh- they don't rush. They and did. What's fucked up? What's so that, fucked up about this? Happened. Is like they rushed this game. Yeah. During a during a time where everybody, even people who hate <laughs> when de- games get, like, delayed, would have understood. They were like, yeah, yeah cool. Rushed like, a game during I've a got, like, another... Were... <laughs> I've got, like, another nine and a half months of sitting inside. I'm good. Take your time. <laughs> like, it's not going anywhere. Yo, for real. Like, that's honestly the thought process. <laughs> Whatever, like, man. You had, a, you had like, a, a legitimate get-out-of-jail-free get card with that. Like, dude, we have to... We, we, we're not at capacity. We're, we're not using our normal stuff. Everyone's at home. So, yeah, unfortunately, dude. these are unforeseen circumstances. We just gotta push this off to give you the game that we, all, we, we want to give you done but no they said oh fuck it everyone can work from home we'll just half-ass this shit and all of a sudden you'll you know if, if nothing else you'll you'll have some fun compilations on YouTube. you know you know what, what we need to do we, they need were to, fucking we need to hire the three of us to speak on behalf of larger companies when they have to deliver bad news because the three of us do this very well <laughs> not even necessarily <laughs> deliver the bad news hey they look it's gonna cost in. you five hundred dollars for 30 seconds they should call us in for a consult is what they should do. Any game yeah. that's about to do something, just call us in and we'll be like, call don't in do CGC. That. Don't don't do that. Here and so he, and CGC here, consulting. CGC consulting for video games only. Uh, here's <laughs> and we could do P- Yo, we'll even, I love that ending. I love that ending. For video games only. Like yeah. just just make sure we don't We have a niche. We're not legal, is. yo. Um <laughs> Wes, onto your article. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. So, um, when it comes down to CD Projekt Red, uh, during a production plan, they were talking about a new DLC that is going to be coming to the game. Um, the DLC we are going to be getting, we're not going to get it until uh, 2023. My my estimation is probably around mid-2023. I hope they delay it longer so it's good. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I'm not going to argue with you at all. Man, we're all jacking it up today. So, um, yeah. So, yes, the company that came out with games like The Witcher, uh, the Witcher 3 and um, and actually they're, they did say they're going to be working on a new Witcher game right now that will be running on the Unreal Engine 5. Correct. Also, I'd like to reiterate on something really quick. The Witcher 3 was supposed to be um, um, polished and revamped for the next gen consoles. That has been put on the back burner indefinitely for now. I'm fine with that. I just, it, well, I just I ran across I that was like a little piece of news that I ran across while I was like when we were yeah. when we were chatting about like what we we're going to talk about. Um, so yeah, that that is on the back burner indefinitely. Uh, I think it's there was no like per se of like why the whole thing was happening, but I, I'd have to say it's probably for this whole uh, 2077 business <clears throat> and working on the 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 release for the new Witcher game. Sorry, yes. go ahead, Wes. So, well, not nah, so. Um, I mean, look, that's all that basically is. I mean, they don't really give us much else on like what it's about, um, where where it involves anything else. But I thought it was pretty interesting that they um, they pointed out uh, some stats right here. So, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven sold just over eighteen million copies since launching in twenty twenty. Okay, mm-hmm. <clears throat> The Witcher three launched in twenty fifteen. That that has sold over forty million copies. Wait, what was that? The Witcher 3. That game's seven years old, and it sold 40 million copies. Well, see, they and did the right thing with that game, though. When they when they put that game out for release, all the DLCs and all this other stuff <clears throat> was free. And in the beginning of the package, it even it even thanked all of their customers for yeah. all of their support for all their years. I, I mean, look, the good thing is move. that it is all of move. the... All of the... Um, 
all of like the uh the game enhancements that are now put on hold you know what i mean any of the any of the dlcs for this like cd project red has kind of made their name for just saying all right yo you can have the dlcs you know I mean just we just appreciate y'all buying our stuff yeah so so you know what I mean so, I, so i'm not even gonna be mad at that and you know what I mean and it looks like they're 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 running down the same thought with this you know what i mean going ahead you, you know I mean even with cyberpunk but um, like I said, dude, they only sold 18 million copies so far. Elden Ring, which has only been out for like a few weeks, maybe like what, six weeks, two months, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's sold 12 million already. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, just to go ahead, just compare like what we, ex- I mean, like two games that were very much expected to be like the next big things. One actually held, I mean, I mean, actually was able to hold that flame. The other one was burned by it. So, yeah. Woo. Oh, what, you like that? Not, yeah. What did I miss? No, no, not to you. Yes to him. <laughs> oh, that, that got exciting really quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So in the spirit of uh, the news pass around that we're doing, um, <laughs> Andy. Oh, we've got three left. Yeah, we do. What's Andy getting? Ah, uh, man. What should I give him? I mean, they're all decent, so. Yeah. Um, Have you played you any of the Kingdom Hearts games? Do. You son of a bitch. I'll do it, but no, he has. No, 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 no. I'm asking a legit question. I, I played um, one. That's what I was gonna give Anthony, by the way. And I think, okay, yeah, but I think Wes didn't. Hasn't your wife played multiple? Yes, and just you've seen her play one them. And, oh yeah, I think that would be a good article for you to, to tap in on. Okay, and plus, I mean, I've watched um Adrian play it on stream a bunch because he, I mean, he's running through the whole fucking series again. Same with like No Man's Sky and the whole Kojima thing. I think those would be better suited for Andy either either or of those. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask I which mean, one you guys wanted because um the cool. I'll the take Kojima, uh, I'll I'll take uh, I'll take Kojima because the Kojima is a fantastic article, man. I yeah, and I I, I know absolutely cool. nothing about No Man's Sky. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, it's fine. Yeah, all right, fine. scoops. How about you tell us about the game that everybody initially was, thought was the next big thing? Well, now then I it, pull that article back up because I thought for sure I was getting Kojima since I'm the one that talked. I'll about vamp a little bit. Anyone. Well, then all right. So no, 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 no. Do Kojima. I'll do No Man's Sky. No, we straight. We straight. We straight. We straight. I'll vamp a little bit. The article open. So, so no, 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 I got it. We good. So <laughs> No Man's Sky. Don't <laughs> motherfucker. I said I got it. I got it, man. Um, <laughs> no Man's Sky's new free update turns you into a space out. How cool is that, though? That does sound pretty fucking amazing. They just keep on just stepping it <clears throat> up with this game, dude. When they, dude, when they brought it back up from nothing, they just knocked this shit out the park. Yeah. So let's let's do these last two years have been fantastic. Let's just do a, a quick rewind on this here for anyone. I don't know how you wouldn't at this point, but for anyone who <laughs> hasn't heard about what No Man's Sky went through, when we first learned about No Man's Sky, and if someone wants to look up when it, its initial release was, date was I don't even so. remember at this point, but, but when the game was first about to come out, it was billed as this super expansive game where you you know you travel you know you you basically have an endless journey in outer space where you can visit these other you know other planets and and all sorts of other shit and and the game i believe was online right like there were other players out there you just weren't likely to see anyone that's how expansive the game was i mean they made space like space Space. like like literally it takes so long to find another celestial yeah. being you know what I mean like so, you mean basically anything so with a game that that was supposed to be predicated on so much adventure and discovery it it flopped so hard because there really wasn't anything in it like you were yeah. just traveling to these different places nothing there was really nothing to do nothing looked all that great there wasn't like a whole you know diverse set of things to find and and you know you you know you could travel for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours and never see another person or species for that matter i would and uh um, shoot my face off it just it just fell extraordinarily flat so people clearly <laughs> you know uh were, were upset by it and uh the company uh who, who's who's the company that they again? uh hello games i believe uh, no Man's Sky. Uh, yeah, I believe that's Hello Games. So Hello uh, Games. Uh, you know, they yeah, heard, it's Hello Games. They heard what everyone said and whew, talk about a revival. They put in the hours and they revived. They literally brought this game back from the dead. It is. It is now everything they said it was going to be before. You ha- you can look at some of the pictures and some of the places you can find in this game. Dude, talk about detail when you see like the different atmospheres and places and different species you can find of you know fauna and animals and all sorts of shit um 
It's just it's the experience that, that they said they were going to deliver to begin with. So the fact that they listened, not only did they listen to their their fans and re revive the game, they won awards for it. Yeah, they basically became comeback kid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. comeback player of the year for most like player. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously for they you got mean the most it was players. like for like two years. It was <clears throat> literally for like a year and a half straight for for um, so, award ceremonies. And and we've said before like you know everyone can fuck up every company can fuck up when you do what you gonna do about it gotta and, own uh, it man. and that's what and, they, and that's what dude, they did they, they owned it they did you know they listened to everything that their fans wanted and, and they released you know the game that they originally promised so we you know we love shit like that um that was just a little a little uh look to the past of no man's sky but hello games has now released yet another large free update to no man's sky this one's called outlaws and it delivers a set of missions where the player can acquire black market tech and other essential goods from other ships in a less than savory manner and then smuggle it for a profit, which sounds badass. There are also bounty missions and planetary raids. There will be high conflict zones in areas where outlaws have captured space stations where you will have plenty of chances to engage in dogfights. Oh, and there are now capes and hoods that you can unlock for your character. Uh, hmm. Studio says I think I saw combat... something about a new ship, too. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm getting there, actually. So the studio okay. says that combat has been improved with speed and excitement being the focus. Ships should handle better, but for those who want more accessibility during the fights, there's a new option called Auto Follow to let you focus more on shooting and shield management. That's actually really great. Um, excuse me. As with almost every No Man's Sky update, there are a plethora of other improvements that might make you want to jump back in. There's a new solar starship, I think is what you're talking about, Wes, which yeah, is the yeah, first yeah. new addition to the fleet since the beginning of 2020. Um, additionally, you'll be able to own nine ships. Previously, you could only own six. And you can recruit and upgrade piles for your ships, which, with, uh, which each have unique combat abilities. All starships have support for more high-capacity cargo slots than before, and you can make the upgrade for your ship at any space station. So... That's pretty dope. I like this. I like the dogfight. Yeah, it definitely sounds interesting. Like you're literally like <clears throat> smuggling space cowboy. Shit. I like. Yeah, you're space cowboy. I mean, there's no other way. There's no other way to put it. But it's so it's so dope to see that like how much they put back into that game, and they're like they're like doubling and tripling down at this point. Yeah. Like they could have easily, they could have very easily walked away after they fixed the game and be like. We righted our wrong. We did what we had to do. Here's the game you wanted. Enjoy. We're gonna go and work on something else now. But instead, just, here they are. Just, fucking, they're just, just turning out more content. I yeah. love. I yeah, love that they're that they're in there that's, for the long haul. That's, that's what. Good. That's what I love. Because especially like when that. you see, and it's nice because when you see with these fucking big companies, like I, I love Bethesda. I always will. But like when you see what they did with Skyrim, when it's just like all they kept doing was just re-releasing the goddamn game on a different system, started yeah, to drive yeah. you nuts. It became a joke over like a four-year stretch. Yeah, remember yeah. where like people were like, eventually you're gonna be able to play the damn game on your microwave. Like that's that's what they're working on. <laughs> oh yeah, um, on your TV screen and shit like that. Not TV, but your fucking my uh, your fucking screen on your goddamn refrigerators. <laughs> yeah. I mean, exactly. I'm pretty sure you can play it on your um. Stop. Your device. Your device that listens to all the content that you talk about, so that it finds stuff for you, because your algorithms are fucked up. Gotcha. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So that's No Man's Sky, and uh, Anthony said he's gonna take. I will not be talking about really, Kojima Studios. I really like this one too because it makes me happy. Uh, so I always have a hard time with his first name. Hideo. Hideo? Oh, Hideo. Hideo. Hideo, Hideo. Hideo, Hideo I'm pretty Kojima. Sure it's Hideo, actually. I think, I think you're right, actually, because I've heard somebody else say it, and it was that way. Hideo Kojima says, Studio is not being acquired by PlayStation. Um, which I actually, I really like. Um, as much as I like PlayStation acquiring a whole bunch of things, um, some studios that you just don't want to see go to the big two. Some um, you just don't want to see go anywhere. Like you like them to have the freedom to put their game wherever the hell they want to put it. Pretty much. Like, they've got they got <clears> Yeah, work with work time. with work with everybody to be like, yo, okay, so let's so can we do it on this system? No. All right, fine. Let's do it with this, this, this. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. just run it. Uh so a rumor's been going around lately that says PlayStation may be buying out Kojima Productions, but the man himself says that this is not happening. Uh, many believe that Hideo Kojima is one of the most uniquely talented people currently working in the games industry. With the Japanese government recently granting the Death Stranding director an award, 
Uh, his recognition in the arts has been given kudos as creator as the creator continues to put out interesting work. Uh, on top of that, speculations have been flying that his studio, Kojima Productions, was in the lineup to be acquired by PlayStation Studios. Uh, but the man himself took to Twitter uh, to say that there will be no acquisition. Uh, according to a recent tweet, Kojima Productions will not be merging with PlayStation. And Kojima clarified that his company will continue to be an independent studio. Uh, Hell rumor, yeah. The rumor began after a banner, and I just actually just saw the tweet. If you guys want to look at it too, it's down at the bottom of the page. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, the rumor began after a banner on PlayStation website, specifically for the PS Studios, swapped out an image of Concrete Genie and replaced it with Death Stranding, uh, leading to many to believe that the tech giant was about to acquire Kojima's outfit. Fucking PlayStation. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing, really quick. I do this all the time, but... You may have so in the long run, down the road, had he ever sold, they he he potentially could have sold to Sony, right? Um, but doing little things like that, whether it was an accident or not, you shot yourself in the foot, right? Yeah. That's how I look at it. That'd just be stupid business. Yeah, but. like you don't like whether you're talking to him or not, and you thought it was going to go one. Well, you just you literally just like. You lost it. You lost your business yeah. if that's what you were going to do at some I, point. I'm glad that he's decided. It's like he's looking at the war, essentially, which is basically yes. what it is at this point between oh Xbox God, or between Microsoft and Sony and just like, no, I'm not going to get involved. I can buy somebody else. We're going to do our thing. We're going to do our like, thing. We're, and when we we're, just, we're just fine. We're, we're, yeah. we're making we're plenty of money. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not worried about shit. He said it was just uh, simply just an understanding. Um, with uh, with PlayStation acquiring a number of game studios recently, including God of War Ragnarok developer Valkyrie Entertainment, and Sony buying Bungie for a massive sum, it's not surprising that many thought Kojima Productions was next. For good or ill, uh, Hideo Kojo Kojima uh, seems steadfast that no acquisition is currently in the works, uh, which many gamers find as a relief. Um, in the meantime, Kojima is reportedly working on a project with Xbox. There you go. Uh, thanks to an industry insider, there are continued speculations that the Japanese director is working on his next game, uh, which Please could be, be Silent Hill. Please be Silent Hill. Please an exclusive Hill. for the platform. However, at the time of writing, there has been no official confirmation, and details about the rumored project are sketchy at best. That would be an amazing fucking game, by the way. A, a, just a revamp of Silent Hill. With him I mean, those, that, I mean, those, well, th well they're, they're his games. I know, but I'm what I'm saying so, is what I'm saying is a, a revamp of his games, um, with the current with the current um systems like that we have and, and the and the current yeah. fucking and the, well, the current well, engines remember, that they're using. That's that's what that's what PT was supposed to be. I know. I know. How but fucked up that was. It was just called PT because it was, it was it was just stood for play, playable trailer, playable teaser, something like that. Play but that was supposed teaser. to be um, an idea of how fucked up the direction of Silent Hill was going to go. Right. And then I it, forget what happened because he was it just got canceled. Well, it, it didn't happen because he was working. He was working with another company, and I think they backed out. And he was like, "All right, fuck it." <laughs> Like I think yeah. it was supposed to be like a it was supposed to be him and somebody else were working on it together, the other person backed out, and I guess that if, was put on the back if, burner. If just hypothetically, if he ever does decide, and if he did, no one really is going to fault him because you know, money talks. But um, if he does ever decide to go to either one or, or anyone exclusively, I hope to God in that contract somewhere it states that no matter where he goes. He still maintains all creative control over the games he comes out with. He has not to. not releasing any creative control. No, to he has else. To. He like has I'll to. put like if like if this is what it means, I'll put my shit strictly on your system. But my games are going to be my games. Yeah, because I, for better or for worse, even though Death Stranding didn't necessarily land with me, to me that was really fucking weird. But regardless, his games are he comes up weird. he comes up with things that nobody else can come up with. Exactly, like and he is so fucking unique, and he's probably the most unique person left. So. I hope to God that if he does ever decide to do that, that he makes sure um, that he's not releasing any yeah. of his creative control to anybody. He he shouldn't, and that's why it's kind of That's why it's nice to see him still being independent in this whole yeah. acquisition of fucking video game titles. Um, where was I? Where was I? 
Uh, as it stands, it looks like Hideo Kojima is potentially spinning a lot of plates, but it seems that at least the PlayStation merger is not going ahead, uh, which makes sense if he's going to be working with Sony's biggest rival in the gaming market. Hideo Kojima uh, se- has been a consistent force in the video game development world since the 1980s, uh, given that the Metal Gear Solid games are some of the best espionage titles ever made, and Death Stranding has certainly made waves with his Uh, waves. His name carries a lot of weight in the industry, uh, with many considering him something of a gaming uh, art... Yeah. A god. A gaming god. I mean, essentially. Yeah. For now, at least it looks like Kojima Productions will remain as an independent studio. Um, Autor, I believe, is the word. Yeah. Not sure what the hell it means, but I'm I'm gonna say god. (laughs) I'm gonna look it up. I was just about to do that myself. Filmmaker whose personal influence and artistic control over a movie are so great that the filmmaker is regarded as the author of a movie. So he's a god. He's potentially I, yeah. uh, he's a god. So I was right. I was right. I, I actually need Pulled to pull that one out of my that, butt cheek, but that was I, right. I actually need to fix something that I said because I definitely fucking misspoke and got myself confused. Silent Hill. None of those games were actually his, but that PT was supposed to be his. It was supposed to be, it was called Silent Hills. Um, it was a collaboration between him and uh, Guillermo del Toro. That's Ooh, what yeah. it was. And then Guillermo backed out, right? I believe so, yeah. It got canceled in 2015, but that was supposed to be. It's a hell of a um, name to work with, man. Yeah, it was supposed to be the next big fucking thing. I think, dude, to combine those two for a fucking horror game? Oh, oh my god. god. Silent dude, Hill I mixed remember, with Pan's I Labyrinth. Played, I played the fucking... I played that on, on your PlayStation 4, Scoop. And yeah, that was and then like... We, remember, then we had him and Matt play? Bro, oh, we that watched. Was one of like... It was hilarious. As I was playing, it wasn't terrifying. But as I watched it as a... As a... Spectator. As an as a spectator or an audience member, that was the most terrifying thing I've ever <laughs> seen in a video game. It was fucking phenomenal. I need, sometimes I need sometimes when you're terrifying. playing certain games, even if they are terrifying, sometimes like your adrenaline takes over from playing, yes. so certain things don't get you. Yes. But when you're just when you're just watching and you don't know what the person playing is going to do, and you can just like absorb yes. everything you feed going off, on yeah, around. Yeah, you feed off the other person's energy as they're playing. That's why some yeah. people they don't like me. They don't like it when I play video games that are like horror games because I really don't show a lot of emotion. So there's not a lot of feedback off of like what I'm doing when I'm playing. The closest, and this is why I kind of wanted West. To... I think you need. This to is why talking. I kind of <laughs> wanted West to do it for. Uh, one of the Freaky Fridays is the game that did it the most to you, if anything. And I think it's just because of your quest for perfection. Was it until was dawn? Until, until yes. dawn. Absolutely. 100%. Because there were so dude. many times in that game where yeah. like, I saw sweat on this kid's brow. And after he would get done a certain part, he would just go. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen him do that in a game before. Ever. Yeah. Never. <laughs> like, never. Never, ever in a million fucking years. And I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> This is like the because, fucking thing ever. So like, yeah, my whole goal was like, I didn't care if people got injured, but my whole goal is to make it, let's make yeah, everybody strict, live. We're I all getting everybody out of here to live at the end, right? <laughs> that was, no that was the goal. What, we're getting out of here alive. Everybody, and like that, dude, right? everybody did. I think the only thing, yeah. the worst thing that happened you is lost the one. one. I did one. lose one. Yeah. I lost one. And then the other dude lost like uh, a couple fingers. Yeah, Poorly and alert. you got and you got mad as shit because after you lost him, you realized what you did to lose him. And he was just like, well, "Fuck, I should not have done that." Yeah, I literally <laughs> but, was gonna um, do the opposite, and I should have. But stuck dude, in with a, my in, a, in a game where you can legitimately lose every single person, only losing one is not that bad. No, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, you also I I think and credit to the person that made that game. I know we're getting a little off tangent here, but we always credit do. to the person that made that game because I think part of what gets obviously the story is great but what gets you actually invested is that they're characters that you know yeah they're like people you've seen, you've seen them in movies, movies and, oh my god they're real people so that they you, use yeah so you're like oh shit like i can't lose her i love her <laughs> yeah. yeah that's really that's all but i when i actually, when i went to this game i was like as long char- as i don't lose hayden panettiere i'm fine. yeah that's that was my goal too i was like she's so hot i'm in love with her don't lose her <laughs> basically Save i was like i'm never gonna get her i'm Save never gonna get her and i'll never get her in real life because but Which if I brother save her in the, up. <laughs> the video game, I can do it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, holy shit. Anyway, so the last. West, you got the last have. one, buddy. Yeah. And I actually have a bonus one as well. Oh, 
Ba-da. Something I found the other day that I actually thought was very interesting, and, and we he decided ahead. not to share with us because he's a fucking cock. Nah, because sometimes I like I like throwing I like a little something extra I to like y'all. To be selfish. Nah, man, I like <laughs> I like getting raw reactions. That's what oh, I like. Okay, I <laughs> thought you were going somewhere else with that, but so, so, so did I. <laughs> I said raw. I was like the only one. I was like, all right, well, I don't like raw. Okay. Bet Monday on Night it. Raw wrestling. Bet on it. Come on. <laughs> Bet on Monday it. Night Raw. That's what I'm talking about. What the hell y'all talking about, y'all nasties? Damn, I done miss Monday Night Raw. Anyway, go ahead. We are going back. Wait, what? Square Wait. Enix is taking us back mm, Square to Enix. a time where we would run with the duck and the dog. Are you drunk? Are you fucking drunk? Not at all. We would I, run with I need, the duck and I need, the dog. I need dingers for you when you slur all your words. There's the duck. There's the duck and the dog. There is a duck and a dog, there's motherfucker. There's the duck and a dog. Square Enix. We got the trailer for the Kingdom Hearts 4 video game. Now, this game is in very early development. We're not looking for anything on this game until most likely end of 2023, maybe even beginning of 2024. <clears throat> but um, we got the trailer into which we uh, we got to go ahead and... I'm trying to figure out. All right. So you guys texting each other back and forth. All right. I thought I was a part of it. Never mind. So um, we got the trailer where we saw Donald and Goofy. Um, they were walking around. They were trying to find somebody. I mean, they were looking for Sora. They haven't found him. They haven't seen him. You got to see a little bit of gameplay in this um, in this uh, trailer. And you got to see the iconic Keyblade flying through the sky. They, um, Sora was climbing buildings. He was surfing up on the walls. Um, and he was like, dude, he's using the Keyblade as like a grappling hook, which is actually pretty cool. But um, yeah, so we don't have any real information about that yet. All we all we know is that the game itself is actually happening. But um, another thing that's going on is for mobile, for iOS and Android, we are getting a 3D action um, game that is called Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. And that's going to be coming late 2022. Um, and... With that one, you will allow players to engage in exhilarating battles against the Heartless and discover new or uh, new original stories. So, yeah, man. So this is going to be, like I said, Dark Road is going to be, um, no, sorry. Missing Link is going to be 2022. We also have something else coming out. For the final chapter, Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, which is going to be coming out in August 2022 with a free update. So, yeah, you got all that coming out. And, I mean, look, you, I mean, for the people who actually play these games... I mean, dude, they're definitely pumped, dude. This this is one of those eras. I mean, this, this is one of those um, game genres that people just go insane for. It's <clears throat> absolutely the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> God, so unprofessional. <laughs> I got a question for y'all. <coughs> I got an answer. I do as well. Have you ever thought that a Legend of Zelda game would ever go beyond a Nintendo console? Yes, yeah, so it was no. just a matter of time. I, I did. I didn't think so. I, I figured Zelda. I figured Zelda, Mario, and those are just untouchables. They've got. I mean, shit. They've been there since what? The, the, their 80s. So here's the thing. <clears throat> Let me really quick. So maybe in good faith, Nintendo would would uh, loan the game title out to another console. Um, at some point, you know, like, hey, you know, because, right, so think of it this way. It's not that Nintendo is not relevant. They are, because they have their own little thing, right? But there's other people that won't buy it or don't buy it or whatever, um, or they just can't afford it, right? Here's the thing. If you put, say, a Zelda game or maybe a Mario game, you just do, like, a test run. You do, you don't do, like, a big brand new game but if like let's say you were to do like a hmm. before we finish like are you saying like a a zelda game that already exists being like remade for a console or a brand new zelda game on a brand new console no i'm talking about a brand new all right so i can see an old game i can't see a brand new game it's so when we when we got the um the breath of the wild 2 trailer you mean the footage that we saw i think it was like a few weeks or like a month or so back yeah Uh uh-huh one of the things that a lot of people were talking about, um, particularly uh, Richard Ledbetter from Games Radar, 
um, they were talking about the fact that it seemed like the game was running not on a Nintendo. Like, like the way that we're getting like frame rates and everything else like that, mm. it didn't look like a Nintendo system. Okay. It seemed like what we were getting was too powerful for the Switch hardware. So maybe you're just getting a new Switch. Maybe you're actually get the Switch Pro. Which would basically be a that's where my brain. PlayStation. That's where I. Go, that's where. That's, I, that's, where, that's where my brain would go first. Yeah. <clears throat> it wouldn't go I like, mean, "Hey, we're giving this out to another system." Now, that, that's not going to happen. Now, Maybe one of the things game. we can now, now 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 one of the things we can go ahead and talk about is the fact that the Breath of the Wild was that wasn't even a like updated Switch game. Like, dude, that was originally created yeah. for the Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you I mean because of that, it was created for Wii U graphics. Mm. So. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be one of those. I mean, look, personally, there's no way in hell I think they're going to lend the name out to anybody. No, I don't. I've, there's a couple different ways, and I actually have thought about this before. Now, if you ever frame the question like, do you do you think that there would ever be a Nintendo game like a heavy hitter like a Zelda or a Mario or a Donkey Kong that would end up on another system? I would emphatically say no. If you were to say... If you had to choose between Mario or a Zelda game, which one do you think would end up on another system? I would 100% say Zelda because I think Mario is firmly planted where it's at forever. Um, yeah. And I have also thought, not necessarily that I want them to do it, but it is an interesting thought. The type of Zelda game you could get from another system would be very interesting to see because Nintendo clearly, I believe, has a focus on keeping it a f I'm, not, I'm not necessarily going to say a family game, but a game that's clearly geared toward a certain audience. Where you, if you get a game like that on PlayStation, they could they could they could do a whole darker twist to that thing, where it's a little more mature. Where maybe you have blood, maybe you have you know what I mean. Like they could they could I do some things. And it would I be mean, look to when see. the when the Mobins and all them other guys fucking die, you know what I mean. It is comical, man. They turn black and they turn to nothing, and they 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 just cloud out. Yeah, and they, you know, you've you've come this far without Zelda ever, or without Link ever having a voice. You know, it's just all those like ha! I could see another, yep. yeah, like stuff like that. Like I could see <laughs> clearly see a system, just a different system, totally, you know, flipping that thing on its head and doing, you know, oh yeah, like. God, if, Zelda, if Link ever does that, I'm the fucking I'm that the would be the Legend funniest Zelda fan, thing. and I keep saying Zelda. <laughs> That would be the funniest fucking idiot. thing. But uh, it would be interesting to see. I don't think it will ever happen, but it would be interesting to see what a different console would try to do to that game. Yeah. Um, like I said before, the game it recently got delayed till spring 2023, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine. Uh, they went ahead and said, in order to make the game experience something special, the entire development team is continuing continuing to work diligently on this game so please wait a little while longer which we say gladly fine yeah you got plenty of time you don't don't give a shit don't give us don't give us right not right now 77 <laughs> all right man and that's what we have in news so now it's time to go ahead and let all the crew members at home and the ones abroad we're going to tell you what we are Playing. <sighs> Alright, I'll kick off what are we playing real quick because I don't have much of anything. I've still been <laughs> I've been running on Horizon, uh, Forbidden West. I went a little bit more into the major story. I mean the main story I I got a as a god. I, I picked up a companion, you know what I mean? Somebody new, which was actually pretty cool. I got to face against some very very big heavy heavy hitters you know what i mean with this shit so it's actually pretty fucking cool um we can talk about last night because that was a horrible oh fuck. can i in, in can the I, beginning it was a horrible night of I, hockey yeah please do I, because i I, I was the biggest fucking idiot last night so yeah, i love you but yes i uh i we I'm had the first a game to fucking admit it. we had a game that made me want to drive over to wes's house and just mush his face for a little bit just like grab his face, just grab Plus his my face and just into go, the screen and no, go. No, no, no. 
Yes. <laughs> we don't do that yes. here. <laughs> so. <laughs> like a dog that peed in the house. What what we are alluding to. Just wipe his nose on it. <laughs> now. Um, what we are alluding to here oh, is sir. we played. First of all, the in, before I even go into individual games, the entire damn night was spent with the exception of one playing teams in the top 30. Yeah. Of. Of Chell, period. That was the that was the most nutty thing. We did so that, we that did, was cool. We actually did well except for the the one team that beat us like what seven to two or three? Seven three. Okay. Yeah. That was maybe a, seven that was two. a rough beating. But um so the the first team we played, which we later in the night found out is the number twenty team in the entire game, and we're actually ranked last month or this month. I forget what it is. Number two. This month. Um they were ranked number two in the elite division, which is obviously the highest division you can get. Mm. And we played them in the first game. We were losing by four. And this is with a human goalie. Wes was in there for this game. And uh, wow, wow. after the after the first period, which wasn't his strongest, he you know he buttoned things up in the second, which is exactly what we needed. Didn't give up a single goal. We went into the third period, tied at four. Again, you played good to start the third. And then they scored a goal with, I think, like maybe like eight or nine minutes left in the third. And then with two minutes left in the third, we came back and scored to tie it. And this is where the face mushing begins. Mm -hmm. So we are tied with this team, who again, we later find out is one of the best teams in the game. So this particular game, probably the best shot we were going to have at beating this team. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> considering how the rest of them went when we saw them again. <laughs> but <laughs> this was as close as we were going to get after this nip and tuck game where we come back from down four and then down one again. We tie it with like two minutes left. They take a shot on Wes with I think like 48 seconds left in the game. Yeah, Makes it was a nice good save. save. It was a, it was a, actually, nice it was a, it was a big yeah. save. Actually, it was, it big. actually saved the game and we we're like, great save. And like, we have perfect. an opportunity here. And, and I, Wes and I, decided. I, I, I was covering it. Well, Wes, Wes covered the puck and then decided For some stupid goddamn to reason. pass the puck out to no one because we really didn't even have anyone that could have done anything with it he passes his puck out straight to i don't know it could have been a computer for all i know um no it was one of theirs on the other team yeah, and uh straight to a guy on the other team who just immediately buries it on essentially an empty net at that point and that was with 48 seconds left to put us down one and then trying to force things to get another goal in a, in a short amount of time i took a penalty and, and that was that but that was um that was a rough one because we did see that we saw that exact team again immediately after i think we lost, only lost by, by three i think yeah two or three. i think we lost by three and then we saw them <clears throat> those same guys again put on a different team clearly they have a couple teams they play with they hopped in with a couple different guys we saw and them again. this team was 19 ranked 19 they were ninth right? they were 19th and they beat us by two or three I think. I think it was three again um but they but there was never really a moment with the exception of that first game none of the other games there was never really a moment where we would have thought like we're gonna come back on this one like they pretty much handled us from beginning to end we didn't never really got too close that first one was our, our best chance yeah to beat the team but Wes, Mitch, look when um, i when i fuck up i fuck <laughs> up man <laughs> Uh, and I'll own it, dude. I'll, I I will own that like a motherfucker, man. Ain't ain't, no, ain't nobody else's I, shoulders that went on but me. I never ever want see the competitive wanting people to have that fire inside of them thing is what came out because I never want, especially in a game, I never want anyone to like feel bad. But like when Wes got super silent after he did that, I didn't want to say anything because I just wanted to let him sit in that for a minute. <laughs> oh, I stewed. I stewed yeah. for a little bit. Bro, I think we like, all like even, the rest like, of the night. Like even when he said my bad, <clears throat> I still didn't say anything. I didn't either. I just my bad. I just sat mm. there. Mm. I just sat mm. I just sat there and I was just like in my head I was like, yeah, it is your bad. And I want you to be thoroughly upset for <laughs> another forty five seconds before I say anything. <laughs> yes. This man didn't say but, uh, shit until he got into the penalty box. No. Oh man. That's rough. Uh, yeah, that was I mean, that was it for, for my week of game, actually. Kind of um, for me, I am still playing Control. Played a, a good chunk of it today. I'm probably going to actually hop on after this. Play more of it. Unless Andy's got video games in mind. Maybe we'll fucking throw down on Chell or fucking... I don't know. But anyway, uh, Control. 
such a good game. Like I was saying before. Yeah. Um, so the whole goal that I started to find out after playing more and more is to find her brother, Dylan. Spoiler alerts. Her brother, Dylan. <laughs> um... Today, I finally found out where he was being held. I made it to the location where he was being held. He was no longer there. He actually turned himself in. Um, now, right before I finished uh, that part of the main mission, I'm actually... Oh, and I just picked up uh, how to levitate, so that's pretty dope. She can levitate. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, she can levitate now. <clears throat> um, but uh, aside from that, yeah, I'm just kind of like running through doing... Uh, like three side missions right now he's he's the main right he's like the main mission i gotta get and go talk yeah. to him and figure shit out um but it seems like power wise um she's got all the power she needs now so she can create the shield i can i can you know move things i can levitate i, I can whole nine um a fucking sick game sick ass game dude just fucking out of this world Highly recommend you play it, anybody. Yeah, it's definitely so, worth it. I need so, to get back into it. Yes, you do. Yeah. That's one of those games that you kind of like really can't like if you, you can't deviate. If you do, like once you start, you gotta just kind of yeah. Play, play, or play. if not, you have to, you like the, you, you can only play like another game. So like I play like chill with you guys, and then I play that, and that's it. I don't yeah, play anything else. Um, you just. Yeah, you play too many games at once, especially with that type of game. You're going to lose out on, like, the story holds and kind of, like, keeping yourself involved in the story and stuff like that. Because it is a very heav heavily story-driven game as well with RPG elements. And it's just, yeah, dude, graphics, story, fucking phenomenal. I forgot so, about like, something that I actually tried playing with the guys. With, um, you Bob, tried playing? Yeah. And then he deleted it because he didn't like it. Maybe. No, I actually think um, if... If Monday goes the way it's supposed to, I actually think we're going to run that one on stream. Gang Beast. That sounds like a scary name. It's essentially like a Fall Guys ragdoll type of um, like knockout game. Okay. Um, it's on the Game Pass right now. Oh, it I've is. Seen it. Okay. Yeah, dude, it is fucking weird. Yeah, I've like. Seen it. Dude, you Gang can you punch, you can kick, Here. you can jump, and you can throw. So Gang Beast is a beat-em-up party <laughs> game developed and published by British indie studios Bone, Le Bone Loaf. Sorry. Uh, the title would originally be published by Double Fine <laughs> Presents until oh, May 2020 and self-published afterwards while it would be later published in physical form by Skybound Games. Uh, it can be had on Nintendo Switch, Pla uh, Nintendo Switch PlayStation, Xbox, Microsoft Windows. And that so, is a yeah, fantastic so right now, name. Yeah, so it's on Game Pass. So, um, look, man, it's at no extra cost to me. Bone Loaf, so, is that what you're saying? That's a, fanta that's a fantastic name, and I feel like everyone in this podcast right now, just to see who wins, after this is over, should go to their wife and be like, honey, I'm gonna can give I my give you my Bone Loaf tonight? <laughs> and just see if it works for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, probably not. No. <laughs> but I will not be playing video games tonight. <laughs> Why? Is your wife getting the Bone Loaf? No, she told me to leave. <laughs> oh, I'm shit, sleeping in the car. Head. I'm literally sleeping <laughs> in my car. Anthony's gonna be like, dude, I thought you said you're playing tonight. Nah, bro. Giving the bone love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, like, like anybody that's nice. got a goatee, you gotta tell them they got a beautiful face mullet. <laughs> Why don't you tell the people? Yep. Why don't you tell the people where they can find us, my brother? All right, y'all. It is time for you to connect with I'm CGC. Sling my bone loaf. While Anthony goes bone loafing, we're gonna go ahead and let y'all know where you can find us. You can go to our website, which is consolegamingcrew.com, or hit us up on email, which is consolegamingcrew at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at console crew. Our YouTube and Instagram are both console gaming crew. If you want to go ahead and not only find us, but find other um, podcasts and content creators that have everything and anything to do with gaming. BossRushGames.com. Boss Rush Games, be better. Hands down, man. Awesome group. Awesome fucking network we're a part of. You can also check us out on Twitch. We are CGC Podcast. Co-op Monday nights with myself, my boys Mike, Hav, and Dan. Um, we've been running Back for Blood, and we might be running some Gang Beasts. Such a weird fucking sentence to say. 
Um, and then we also have our fun Fridays to where we play Chell or we run into something else or maybe we might go back into Freaky Friday. You never know. Things can get weird. <clears throat> but yeah, man. Also, anywhere you listen to us, whether it's YouTube, whether it is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I don't care. If you can rank, rank us, please do. Five star. Throw us comments. Let us know what you think. We want to be better. We want to create better content for everybody, and that means that we need to hear from y'all. So please let us know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So until next time, as always, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. So that's why we want y'all to stay safe, wash your hands, mask up, do what you need to do to feel good. And as always, game on, baby. Game on, on, y'all. Be good. Peace.